What do you think? Do you like it better than the Rolls Royce? Ugly. What? It's uglier on the outside. There's literally a hole in this car. It, there, there is a small hole, but Wizard will fix it. Welcome to Hoobie's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube, and you are looking at a dream fulfilled right here. My pinky is up and proud because I just bought this, a 2008 Maybach 57, and I'm sure a lot of you remember when these things came out brand new. They brought it over from England on the Queen Elizabeth II in a glass container, flew it in a helicopter over New York City, and then dropped it basically onto a hotel to much fanfare. It was incredible. This thing was over $350,000 new, and I bought it for only $20,000. $20,000 for a Mercedes Maybach 57. How, you may ask? Well, it has a lot of miles on it, and it's a, it's a slight scratch and dent special. Just slight. Now, I just came back from my detailer to see if he could buff out this, uh, this little scratch here, and unfortunately he said there's absolutely nothing that he can do. I have no idea what happened to this Maybach, what happened to get it can openered, uh, but I bought it this way. It was at a Copart auction salvaged, I'm assuming, because of this, and there's a lot of theories as to how this happened, but I think it's from Wolverine just going to open a door and he sneezed and his claws came out, but uh, that's, that's my working theory. But as you can see, it is quite damaged. And we'll go more in depth, uh, to this damage in a little bit, but also look at this number here, 123,000 miles on this Maybach, so it's also used as a daily driver. So $20,000 for some uh, cosmetic issues. Uh, this is going to be expensive to fix, but not that expensive. But even so, the cheapest clean title, non-wrecked Maybach in the USA, you can buy for $40,000, $50,000, which is way, way less than new, obviously. And the reason for that depreciation is probably the Maybach itself. It was a pretty big failure when it came to the luxury car scene here in the United States. It was Mercedes' own fault, really. But before we dive into why Maybach was a failure and uh, this, I would certainly like to thank Copart for sponsoring today's video and helping me find this Maybach. And I'm sure you all have heard of them as they're the largest source of online auctions for salvage and insurance cars. And with over 175,000 vehicles listed at any given time, you can find just about anything on there. If you're looking for a winter project, there's clean title cars listed with mechanical issues or light damage offered on Copart ranging from Ferraris to Fieros, repairable luxury cars like this one, along with its Rolls Royce or Bentley competition, or good parts cars to help you finish off a project. You can search for yourself and see on Copart and just browsing the listings to find stuff like this is pretty entertaining. But in order to access a lot of the features and view live auctions, build a watch list, get alerts when cars are selling along with actually bidding on the cars, you need to be a Copart member. And Copart is hooking up Hoobies Garage fans with 20% off a basic membership by going to www.copart.com slash Hoobies and signing up. So support me and my generous sponsor by signing up at copart.com slash Hoobies. And if you find something interesting listed there, after you get your membership, of course, that you want me or the car wizard to revive, post the listing in the comment section below. I'd love to look and see what you all find. But uh, let's get to some Mercedes Maybach history. Now the Maybach brand was established around the turn of the century, not too long after Mercedes had established themselves. This is also a German brand and they built very opulent luxury cars all the way up until about World War II. They stopped for war reduction. I think they built tanks. And then after that, they never really built a car ever again until they were acquired by Mercedes. And this was the first product to bear the Maybach name. Now, a lot of people think that the Maybach is just a pimped out S-Class, a body kit or whatever, but that is absolutely not true. It shares a lot of components mechanically, electrically, but it's its own body, own chassis. It's a little longer and wider than an S-Class, and it was supposed to be really opulent. Built as something to rival Rolls-Royce or Bentley with a price to match. The problem is when they styled this thing, they didn't make it look that much different from an S-Class, and they were asking triple for this than 
an S-Class and it didn't look all that different. It didn't make any sense. So there was competition within Mercedes on the S-Class, especially when the redesign came out in 2006 and 7, and it was beautiful. The technology was, was up there with the Maybach, but then there was also other brand competition. Around the new millennium, you had Rolls-Royce and Bentley break apart. Rolls-Royce went to BMW and they came out with the Phantom, which was an amazing car, and Bentley came out with their Continental GTs, the new Mulsanne's, all that really, really nice vehicles. So it left the Maybach really in the dust. I think they sold one fifth of these versus a new Rolls Royce, which they didn't sell that many Rolls Royces. So this really was a failure and they depreciated quick, really quick. That's why you can find a nice one of these for under $50,000 all over the place. Uh, but obviously I didn't pay that. This was the cheapest Maybach in the USA, my very first car with a salvage title, though, and obviously it, it, it needs some work. I mean, it's not a Tavares level of project, but it's still, it's still pretty bad. Before we dive in, though, I have to give the previous owner a lot of props for daily driving one of these things, 123,000 miles, which is the highest that I've seen. I'm sure there's some limousine company cars that have that many miles, uh, but this one for sure was just driven by somebody. And uh, some choices here are pretty funny. The tires on it are called Foursomes? Is, am I reading this right? Foursomes. Yes, Foursomes Pintas. And look at that Maybach logo with the weathering on it. It's just crazy. Of course, the hood ornament on the Maybach is one of the special touches. They have this MM logo everywhere, including inside of these crystal beautiful headlights. Also, notice this uh, little bit of damage here. This was a well-used vehicle. Somebody traded this thing like well, like an old S-Class, and really, it was a Maybach until until this happened. Now, this probably looks pretty bad, and it is a pretty extreme damage. You can see something just cantilopered this door, and it went into the corridor before it was finally turned off. There's some electrical box in here. This piece of plastic uh, has damaged. The door, I actually got open once, got the door panel off. I was able to open and close the door until it got kind of stuffed. But the latch is actually down around here, and the door latches just fine. But still, you can see this rear quarter is pushed in a little bit, and you can see where this C-pillar back here has wrinkled a touch. So I imagine, even though I can get a new door and put it on, and get a new rear quarter, and have a body shop put it on, this is still going to need to be pulled out by a frame machine just a little bit. Not the end of the world though, but just look at this craziness here. It's almost like somebody ran the fork of a forklift across this thing, uh, but that's probably not what happened. The Wolverine theory is the only one that really makes sense to me, but maybe somebody saw this happen, or they own this car, or they hit this car so they can fill us in. Uh, but continuing the tour, you can see I have a sunroof up here, and a solar panel that runs the climate control when the car is off, so the interior is always comfortable. Now the rear end of this thing is very distinctive and thankfully this big taillight piece is undamaged. There's a little crack here but I'm not going to worry about that. This is a, a hoopty Maybach and it is in very nice shape otherwise. Now the interior of a Maybach looks every bit of $300,000. Even to this day it is absolutely beautiful. Just look at all of this wood and leather, and my favorite part is probably the ripples that they put into this wood. Uh, but you saw the foursome tires. Look, somebody put uh, generic floor mats into this thing. Uh, absolutely crazy. But inside you're greeted with a rich leather smell. Of course, the leather stitch dash, beautiful wood. The finishes in this thing are just unreal. Of course, you have the Maybach logo on the Mercedes S-Class steering wheel with the wooden buttons. Maybach logo on the Mercedes key, and this thing actually runs. It runs quite well, actually. Very smooth, no check engine light. There is a low battery warning, aromatic malfunction, SRS light, and uh, tire pressure monitor. And there is definitely a hissing noise coming from the door. I assume it's the vacuum line for the soft close system. That would be my guess is what's destroyed here. Uh, but this thing drives just fine. So because of that low battery warning, some of the comfort functions are not available. I don't think the climate control is going to turn on, but the uh, switch panel turns on. Let's see, uh, let's see if the window shade works. That's a no. Now the cup holders aren't electric. They, they pop out, which is pretty cool. There's two of them. 
And also, you have a pretty cool pop-out for your cell phone right here, which this one has a Bluetooth plugged in instead. It uh, is very happy to see you when you push that button. Glove box is in here. There's no owner's manual, but there's a eight movie family fun pack. Uh, all right. And lots of other cool features. The air suspension, you can tighten it up, you can raise it up. This also has a distance control and a collision alert warning, which when this came out in 2004, that was incredibly advanced. There's also some help for parallel parking. Very, very advanced, like I said, for 2007 and eight. But this car was meant to be ridden in, not driven, so the back is a very nice place to be, except uh, except if you were sitting back there when, when Wolverine attacked. Actually, before we go back there, I found some remnants of the previous owner, a Cartier sunglasses case, and uh, no glasses in there, sadly, but you have a Walmart receipt from Connecticut. They spent $25 at Walmart for whole milk and cocktail mix and broccoli and flour. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> There's a, there's a scratcher in this thing too. And a business card for a body shop. Probably when that happened. Very interesting. Let's uh, move on to the back. Now a lot of cars have plastic window shades, but this, this is a full out electric curtain that closes, it slides all the way across and gives you full privacy. This is the undamaged side, but still a, a little damage from from ownership here. But look at all the adjustment you have for the rear seat. This is more than most front seats in cars and you can adjust the front one at will, say if it's too far back like it is right now. And that way you can also watch TV, which none of this stuff is coming on unfortunately, but you can see this is a very, very nice place to be. And when you look up here, you can see the outside temperature. You can also see the time and the speed that you're going so you can backseat drive really easily. You also have your own vanity mirror, which it's not lighting up right now. Uh, but probably the coolest part is back here. You have an entire cabinet with a DVD player, some more storage. Notice how that storage cubby is kind of champagne glass shaped. That's because you have, well, you have your phone system here, the control for the shades, and you have a cooler right here, which which is actually cool. It's a cold refrigerator. That's working amazingly. But you also have pop-out cup holders right here for your champagne bottle of, well, that, that kind of fell apart, and your champagne glasses. They don't go down very far. It's just to grab on to the champagne. So when you put it down, you press, and it grabs it, which is absolutely ridiculous. Now I've kind of avoided this side of the car and that's because, well, it's uh, crushed in. It appears the door caved in way more than what it was left with because the inner door panel has moved in considerably more than the outer door panel. You know, it's a lot of daylight coming into the cabin, but it's pretty impressive how this window is still staying up. There's one part of the regulator still grabbing this shattered glass and it's uh, it's holding actually, it's pretty stable. You can also see the track for the sunshade. Hopefully that can be straightened out and fixed. But the door panel, which is now in the trunk, is also pretty messed up, so I need one of those as well. So you're probably wondering how somebody would go about procuring my body panels and other parts and pieces that this thing's going to inevitably need. And I don't think it's for the Mercedes dealer. They may have some of this, uh, but uh, I doubt they're gonna sell you a new door panel or a rear quarter. And I wasn't able to find any salvage Maybach parts in the United States, but I sure did my homework before I bought this thing and I found everything that I needed in Europe. There's a dismantler there that specializes in Maybach, actually. He has several cars and he is sending me everything I need. A complete door, a rear quarter, and some other little odds and ends. We'll put the car together from there and I'm sure I'll find a few more things, uh, but at least the big things I know they are coming. Now, other than the obvious damage here, there are plenty of other things that need to be taken care of that you would associate with a Mercedes of this age and 123,000 miles. Things that I've dealt with before with having V12 Mercedes like this, like my CL65, my S600, it's the same V12 bi-turbo under the hood. So lots of power to haul this thing, even though it weighs almost as much as a Hummer H2. So it still gets up and goes pretty good. So let's take this Mercedes out for a little cruise and do what it's probably destined to do after I get this thing fixed. We're going to pick up my daughter from school and give her a ride home. She's never seen this before and it, all that, but she, she may be impressed. Or maybe not. Hi, Ellie. Hello. How are you? 
are you? Good. How was school? Good. Did you make this? Yes. Wow. Very neat. Well, today I'm picking you up in a limousine, a Mercedes limousine. What do you think? Do you like it better than the Rolls Royce? Ugly. What? It's uglier on the outside. Than the Rolls Royce? Especially on that side. Oh, are you sure? Look all the way around it, honey. Come on. It's much nicer than the Rolls Royce. Look at those taillights right here. Nope. It's not? No. Look at that door. What about it? It's... Ah! See, it's broken. Did you get in a car accident today? Uh, no, I bought it this way. Uh, there's literally a hole in this car. It, there, there is a small hole, but Wizard will fix it. We'll get a new door. But see, it drives really smooth and nice. You're really comfortable back there. No, not. Y yes, you are. It's a little cold, but once all this is working, it'll be a very, very nice car to take you to school in. That's the plan. You have to go to school in a Maybach, Ellie. I would have dreamed of going to school in a Maybach when I was a kid. Daddy? Yeah. No. <laughs> so it may not have my daughter's seal of approval because the door is well, kind of unsealed right now, but I sure am in love. I am kind of worried though what one person is going to think and that's the car wizard. So in the next episode, we'll go up to him and we'll check out uh, all the other things that are wrong with my Maybach. <laughs> my Maybach, I can't believe I'm saying that. Thank you for watching.